I will teach you to be rich by Ramit Sethi. Have you been wondering what the book I will teach you to be rich is about but don't have the time to read it? In this video we are going to summarize the book and extract all the core messages. Hey it's Emma from 5 Minute Summary where we cover the core messages of books and contents in 5 minutes. If you are new here make sure you click that subscribe button, let's get into it. Most people fall into one of two camps regarding money, we either ignore it and feel guilty, or we obsess over financial details without taking action, both options yield the same results, which is none. People love arguing minor points, partially because they feel it excuses them from actually having to do anything. You don't need to be an expert to get rich. The single most important thing you can do to be rich is to start early. Getting started is more important than becoming an expert, it is also known as the 85% solution. Understanding that it's okay to make mistakes. Spending extravagantly on the things you love and cutting costs mercilessly on the things you don't, this is also known as conscious spending. Playing offense, not defense, and using money to design your rich life. Sethi considers himself rich now because he can. Make career decisions because he wants to, not because of money. Help his parents with their retirement, so they don't have to work if they don't want to, and spend extravagantly on the things he loves and be relentlessly frugal about the things he doesn't. What is a rich life? A rich life means you can spend on the things you love as long as you cut costs mercilessly on the things you don't. Focus on the big wins, the 5 to 10 things that get you disproportionate results, including automating your savings and investing, finding a job you love, and negotiating your salary, get the big wins right. Investing should be very boring and profitable over the long term. Build a collection of spending frameworks to use when deciding on buying something. Having a good credit score is important because it makes you less risky to lenders meaning they can offer you a better interest rate on loans. If you're booking travel or eating out, use a travel card to maximize rewards, for everything else, use a cashback card. The six commandments of credit cards are Pay off your credit card regularly. Try to get fees on your cards waived. Negotiate a lower APR. Keep your main cards for a long time and keep them active, but also keep them simple. Get more credit if you're debt-free, and Use your credit card's secret perks. When optimizing your credit cards, avoid Closing accounts before thinking ahead Damaging your credit score, and Playing the 0% transfer game. Sethi recommends putting at least $50 more each month toward any debt you have so you can invest sooner. The 5 steps to getting rid of credit card debt are Figure how much debt you have. Decide what to pay off first. Negotiate down the APR. Decide where the money to pay off your credit card will come from, and get started. There are six systematic steps to investing. Sethi calls it the ladder of personal finance. The rungs are as follows. Rung one, if your employer offers a 401k match, Invest to take full advantage of it and contribute just enough to get 100% of the match. Rung 2. Pay off your credit card and any other debt. Rung 3. Open up a Roth IRA and contribute as much money as possible to it. Rung 4. If you have money left over, go back to your 401k and contribute as much as possible to it. Rung 5. If you have access to a health savings account, it can also double as an investment account with incredible tax features few people know about. Rung 6. If you still have money left to invest, open a regular non-retirement investment account and put as much as possible there. A conscious spending plan involves four major buckets where your money will go. Fixed costs is about 50 to 60% of take-home pay. Allocate 10% to investments. Allocate 5 to 10% to savings goals. Remaining of 20 to 35% can be guilt-free spending money. If you're investing in the long term, the best time to make money is when everyone else is getting out of the market. Asset allocation is your plan for investing, the way you distribute the investments in your portfolio between stocks, bonds, and cash. 
By diversifying your investments across different asset classes, like stocks and bonds, or, better yet, stock funds and bond funds, you can control the risk in your portfolio. Your investment plan is more important than your actual investments. If you're in your 60s or older, a sizable portion of your portfolio should be in stable bonds. In your 30s or older, you'll want to begin balancing your portfolio with bonds to reduce risk. Dollar cost averaging refers to investing regular amounts over time. Vanguard research found that lump sum investing, investing a big pile of money, actually beats dollar cost averaging two-thirds of the time. Sethi doesn't recommend investing in cryptocurrencies unless you have a fully functioning portfolio first. If you enjoy this video and find it valuable, click the like button and subscribe to the channel, make sure to also check out the other videos in the personal development series where you will find more 5-minute summaries of amazing books. I'll see you on the next one.